Hello and welcome to iGameOver channel. In this episode, we're going to learn how to install a power supply or a PSU. Now, before we begin, I have to say, I cannot stress enough how important okay, it is for you to choose a good power supply. So always choose a power supply that is a good brand. Okay, and always choose a little more than you need just so that your power supply doesn't have to work that hard, you know, because if you get a power supply that can output, say, 450 watts of power and then you have enough stuff to saturate it, right, to use that 450 watts, then your power supply is going to keep working 100% and the fan is going to kick in and your computer is going to be louder, right? Now, the point is that, say, if you need 450 watts of power, okay, by like 600 watts of power. This way, you will not have to stress your power supply that much and it's going to work just easy and quiet. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into the work. For the purpose of our tutorial, we're going to use a fractal design 550 watt semi-modular power supply. What does the semi-modular means? Well, it means that the power cables for the motherboard and CPU are hard mounted while all the cables like the PCIe for graphics card and the peripheral and SATA cables are modular. It just means that they can be mounted to how you desire. Every case is different, but your place for the PSU will look something like this. And so to install that PSU, you need to bring it into the case to the bracket so you can actually screw it in. Now, how hard or easy it is depends very much on your case and every case is different, but basically what you need to do is to wrangle or just put in your power supply to the bracket so that we can permanently mount it with screws. Once this is complete, we can put our screws into this, this and this hole. Next up, we're going to install our CPU power cable. Basically, this is the cable that is divided into two fours. Some CPU sockets require you to have eight pins. Our is non-overclockable board, so it doesn't require so much power and it only requires one of them. Basically, what you want to do is to put it in with a latch correct way and just press it in until you hear a click. Next up, we'll supply power to our motherboard. That is that big, thick 24 pin cable. It used to be 20 pins, so they started introducing 20 plus four. I'm not entirely sure why they continue doing this. There are no 20 pin boards anymore, but basically you align it and press it in. Next up, we'll connect system fans. Now you might want to connect them to a motherboard, but this case specifically has a sort of a fun hub. So first of all, we need to connect the fans into the fan controller cables, which are the three or four pins. After that, we're going to connect a PCIe cable uh, that will feed your graphics card, as well as a SATA peripheral cables to connect to your hard drives and fans. Once you're done, connect your Molex cable to your fan hub and any SATA cables to your hard drives. This specific computer does not have any hard drives, so we don't need that. And voila! you're done with this part. So what do you think? Was it difficult? I don't think so. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode and we'll see you in the next one when we'll learn how to install a RAM memory. And that is going to be the last uh, part, that one about the RAM memory is going to be the last uh, small part, so to speak, uh, where we learn a little bit in depth on how to install each part specifically. After that, there's going to be a big video, which is going to run you through the entirety of the build uh, in a quick succession and you will be able to then see uh, what comes after what and um, you know how to build a computer from uh, zero to 100 percent and you will have all the skills you need to be able to complete your own project so thank you for staying with me and until the next time toodaloo